In today's video, I'm going to show you, how I build my large size cradled artist panels. These panels are typically larger than 36 inches in any one direction. The one I'm building today is just under 48 inches. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. Like my other panel builds, this one has a 3 16 of an inch Luan surface. But as you can see, the framework underneath is more complicated than my previous builds. Large panels require lots of reinforcements. Like the different kinds of corner brace supports you see here. Want to know how to build one for yourself? All of this and more will be addressed. Right after the bumper. So stick around a while. And let me show you how it's done. Yeah? Really quick, before I get into today's video, I have to appease the gods of YouTube's algorithm. So let's just get this out of the way. If you like this content and want to see more, please comment, like, and subscribe. At the very least, click the like button. It helps me know that I was helpful to you in some way, shape, or form, and that is the entire reason why I make these videos. Thanks in advance. Now, onto the good stuff. To start making large size cradled art panels, I first cut down the stock into pieces that are more manageable. The parts list shows the pieces, that will be used for the cross bracing. The cross bracing can be cut down to their exact length and don't need to be oversized. The stock that will be the cradle outer wall will need to be cut slightly oversized, by about an inch or more, so there is enough room to cut the miters without cutting those boards too short. Once all the parts on the list, are rough cut to length, we begin by cutting the mitered ends on our outer wall pieces. Marking the top side of the stock with a 1 or a 2, as we make the cuts. We mark out the final 46 inch length from the end, and mark our square cut and angle cut lines for reference. Then, sneak up on the final cut length, on side 2 of the miter jig. Repeat these same cuts for the rest of the outer wall pieces. The dimensions for all the parts of the cut list are outlined in the source material for this video. To cut the dados in the outer wall pieces, we'll need to switch over to the cross-cut sled. Set the blade height by marking a piece of scrap at a quarter inch. Set the scrap piece on top of the sled, and raise the blade to match the line height. Run some test cuts until you're satisfied with the cut depth. When the blade height is good, I mark out the areas that need to be notched out, that will receive the ends of the cross bracing once fully assembled. and I label which side needs to be facing up when I make the cuts. Run the stock through the blade, carving out the ends first, then come back and hog out the middle portion of the dado. I check the fit of the dado using a piece of scrap. Repeat these cuts for all the parts necessary. Next, we're moving on to the cross bracing. It should already be cut to its final length. All we're doing now is cutting out the half lap joints necessary for it to fit together. We'll be cutting out the corner brace dado grooves a little later on in the video. We're going to use the same saw blade height trick we used to make the dado cuts to set the blade height for the cross brace half lap cuts. Run your test cut on some scrap then move on to removing the material from the cross brace pieces as shown in the source material diagram. Repeat these steps for all the cross brace pieces. Be sure to test fit the half lap joints and make sure they sit flush when put together. Mine weren't quite flush when I tested the fit. So I took them back to the table saw and removed a little more material off camera. Now that we're done with all the half lap joint cuts, we're ready to move on to the next step. You should have four outer cradle wall pieces that have mitered ends and quarter inch dado grooves notched out as shown here. You should also have four cross brace pieces that have half lap grooves carved out where indicated on the source material, as shown here. Next, we're going to be carving out some grooves along the inside walls of the panel frame that will lock in reinforcing angle bracing to give the panel some rigidity. We want to minimize joint articulation while keeping the panel as light and strong as possible all while having robust construction that will last a lifetime. 
This next part is a bit advanced, so take your time to follow along, re-watch this video as many times as you need to, to fully understand the concepts being demonstrated. We're going to slow things down a bit, as I walk you through, and demonstrate my router table setup, and show you the techniques I use to build any cradled art panel over 36 inches. And as always, if you have any questions, you should always feel free to leave them for me, down below in the comments section. The first thing we need to do, is to set the router depth to about 1 8 of an inch. This doesn't have to be exact, but don't set the bit too deep. Make adjustments and run test cuts on some scrap until you're satisfied with the bit depth. The easiest way I've found to set the router, to exactly half the stock thickness, is to mark a piece of scrap and adjust my router fence manually. I'm using my pocket square to mark the lines I'll use as reference when aligning the fence. These lines need to wrap around the end of the workpiece, and onto the other side. I turn the bit by hand so that the blades are perpendicular to the fence. That way I can get the best visual read on where it will make the dado cut. Secure the fence before performing your test cut. In my case, I just need to clamp it tight. Check to make sure the dado is centered on your stock. To do this, I perform a test on a piece of scrap, then rotate the workpiece and run it through the cutting blade from the other side. If the stock catches on the cutter head, it's not centered and you'll need to make adjustments to the fence. If it doesn't catch and the stock slides perfectly over the cutter head from the opposite side, congratulations! You nailed it! Make sure the power is off before running the stock backwards over the cutter head. In order to perform these dado cuts accurately, we'll need to account for the thickness of the cutter head. If we don't, our dados will either be a quarter inch too long, or too short. So, I'm going to show you my technique for making reference lines, that align with the cutter head, so you can start and stop the workpiece perfectly every time. Simply grab some masking tape and place it on the fence, put it in the area directly behind the cutter head. Cover at least 2 inches off the height of the fence with tape. Next, grab a square and set it along the fence, until it butts up against the router bit. Strike a line on the tape at the corner of the square, then flip the square over and mark the other side of the router bit. It doesn't matter if the router fence is not square with the table edge. Only that the marks we make are square to the fence. Which is why we rely on the fence position to make our marks using a framing square, and not the edge of the router table. Finally, use a pocket square, to draw vertical lines where you made the marks. Now we have a reference point on the fence, that shows us exactly where the cutter head starts and stops. All we have to do is mark the tape. Knowing exactly where the cutter head starts and stops is necessary for precision. The line on the left side is where cutting will start, if we drop a piece of wood, down on it from above. The line on the right indicates where we need to stop cutting, and takes into account the quarter inch thickness of the cutter head. The parts drawing shows a 4 and 3 eighths dado, starting from the edge of the cross brace stock. There is another dado on the other side, as well as two dados on the other end of the stock. Both of those are the same length as the one shown here. After marking my length of 4 and 3 eighths, and transferring that line all the way around the cross brace, I now know where I want to stop making the dado. So, all I need to do, is push the piece into the router bit, until the line on the wood reaches the line marked, stop, on the tape. I mark all the cross brace pieces at the 4 and 3 8 measurement, on both ends of each piece, and I transfer the line, all the way around the stock. Now, I'm ready to go. These next few pieces I'll demonstrate slowly so you can see how the start and stop lines work. After that, we're going to pick up the pace. I cut a dado on one side of the cross brace, then flip it over and carve out another dado on the opposite face. I repeat the dados on the other end of the same piece of stock, then I repeat these steps, on both ends, of all the other cross brace pieces. Thank you. 
Now that the cross bracing is done, it's time to move on to the final dado cut stages of the outer walls. But before we begin, I just wanted to remind you that all dimensions listed for the outer wall pieces, originate from this end here, and will need to be transferred around the stock, if you're following along at home. We begin by marking the three dimensions down one side of the outer wall stock, then use a square to strike a line. Next we label each line with either, start, or stop, as shown here. Transfer these lines around the underside of the stock, so that you can check your dado cut for accuracy. All the outer wall boards should look something like this on both ends. We begin the dado grooves by cutting all the way up to the first stop line. Then, we begin the long dado cut by aligning the two start lines, and dropping the poplar stock straight down on the cutter head. Run the piece down the fence until you reach the stop line. Then slowly and carefully lift the stock off the table, being sure not to push the wood back into the cutter head by accident. When cutting the longer 9-inch dados, the wood is lowered straight down by rocking it into place, using the back end of the tabletop as a leverage point. This allows me to keep a tight grip and fully control the piece as it's lowered onto the spinning blade. Use the same leverage point when picking the stock up off the cutter head at the last stop line position. Repeat these steps on both ends of all the outer wall pieces, and we're done with all the cutting. Next up, it's time to start the assembly. That's it for part 1. Please click on part 2, to continue on with this tutorial.